I am glad to finally meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of this Yan Zhou Yao Cheng. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green. He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? <laughs> That's right. But don't worry, this isn't a trial. I just want to have a chat with you and get a better understanding of the facts. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them but no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. Let me be clear, the questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts, so please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And, perhaps, you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. So Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know- Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? Apart from the Law Fu, there are many other worlds suffering from Stellaron corrosion. For example, Urelo 6, the world that the Express stopped at before reaching the Law Fu, was one of them. To the Express, Stellarons act as roadblocks on the Silver Rail and pose risks to the warping process. And that's why dealing with Stellaron issues is part of the duty of the Nameless. Ah, I've heard about those problems caused by Stellarons. The Express connects various worlds, so it makes sense for you to take care of this. The Cosmos is a mess, and the Trailblazers are just doing their best to fix it. Hmm. I understand. Let's move on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? I personally met Don Shu once. Her closest friend was killed during the war on the Fang Hu, and she harbored deep hatred towards the hunt. So she spent years making preparations in the Alchemy Commission in order to take revenge on the Xianzhou. Revenge is also a form of the hunt. However, that doesn't explain how she managed to bring the Stellaron into the Scale Gorge waterscape, which was guarded by the Vidyatara. Well, you should ask Don Shu herself for the answer. Unfortunately, Don Shu is dead, 
and even her corpse has crumbled into ash. That's one less clue we can pursue. According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Sky Faring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. Fantilia is one of the Heliobi, the energy life forms that once fought against the Sienjo. They're known for their unpredictable and elusive nature. Just as she said, when the Ambrosial Arbor resurrected, its roots broke through the creation furnace on the Lawfu, accidentally releasing the Heliobus fiend fire sealed inside. This can be used as circumstantial evidence. If Elder Huai Yen accepts the explanation, so do I. Oh. It seems that your answers have addressed all my questions. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Fei Shao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the Nameless, but for you too, General Jingyuan. First, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the Six Charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, putting the Lawfu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw, is this your line of thinking or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and have been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Fu did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Fu has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Law Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the divine foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Law Fu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also the scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. 
It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So, my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan, General Fei Xiao? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's Interrogation Division to record a detailed testimony with the Karmic Mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report, and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Your willingness to help is truly heartwarming, youngsters. Then, as the Merlin's Claw requests... Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance, but I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yaoqing. So, you are here for Hulei. Exactly. Hulei is locked up in the Lawfu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borisen, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yaoqing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Borisen suggest they're planning something big, so we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. And as for Hulei, I'll send my lieutenants Zhao Chao and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, Shall we get this started? I'm really sorry about all this. But the testimony in the Shackling Prison won't take up much of your time. I'll call for a messenger to take you to the Interrogation Division. You just need to give your testimony, and then you can head back. So no need to worry. As you wish, General. The Shackling Prison. I... didn't expect to be back here after all these years. Don Hung. Don't worry about me. If you're ready, I'll open the gate for you. This is one of many entrances used for temporary access. Since you're not actual prisoners, it makes sense for you to use this entrance. Please come on in, dear guests. What are you looking at? 
The shackling prison on the Lawfu is completely different from the one on the Yaqing. It's completely underwater. Whether it's in the clouds or underwater, breaking free would still be a piece of cake for me. <laughs> still thinking about your old jailbreak tricks, huh? Forget it. You're free now. Just don't do anything stupid, or the judges will throw you back in there and lock you up for a few hundred years. You'll see me again in just a few days. Taking Hulei back to the Yaoqing means a lot to the Foxians on the ship, and to the General herself. So stay alert. Guests, my name is Shui Yi, and I'm here on orders from the Incarceration Division of the Ten Lords Commission. We're Zhao Cho and Moza. General Fei Xiao sent us to extradite the Borisin criminal Hulei to the Yaoqing. We're here to inspect the conditions of his imprisonment, and make preparations for the handover and transportation. I assume you've been briefed, Your Honor. Your visit request has been approved. I'll be your guide for this trip. Prisoner Hule, the warhead and brood lord of the Boris and Abominations of Abundance, and the arch-nemesis of the Foxians, is responsible for 2,123 wars of aggression and countless associated crimes. Due to his heinous acts, he has been imprisoned in the depths of the Shackling Prison and subjected to the punishment of the Forest of Swords until the end of time. He shall never be pardoned. No need to repeat his crimes and sentence, Your Honor. He is the greatest enemy of us Foxians. The stories of his atrocities are used to terrify our children. I'm well aware of every crime he's committed. Let's move on to the next step. When it comes to visiting criminals, there are rules in place to ensure your safety. I know you've heard legends about Hulei since you were children, but your knowledge about him is likely very limited. Only the judges of the Ten Lords Commission truly know what kind of abomination is locked up at the bottom of the Shackling Prison. It has been centuries since Jing Liu, the former sword champion of the La Fu, captured Hu Lei. And during all those years, we never provided him with any food. Yet he somehow managed to stay alive. It defies all the documented physical characteristics of the Borison. The Forest of Swords, forged by the Punishment Division, is a device of intense torment, used to execute sinful abominations. Most Borisin die within three days in the forest, but Hulei is different. Every time the blades pierce him, his body instantly heals. Despite the brutal punishment, he somehow manages to survive. The complex rules are there because of his abnormal characteristics. Do you understand now? I apologize for any offense caused. Please continue, Your Honor. I've given you the instructions regarding Hu Lei's visitation. Please make sure you read them carefully. And please, take this pellet before proceeding. No, I'm not taking random medicine. Then you won't be allowed to visit Hulei. Just swallow it already. Hulei is like all Borisin. He can release a pheromone called Lupatoxin that induces fear. Thousands of years ago, we Foxians were enslaved by the Borisin. Not because we were naturally weaker, but because of their Lupatoxin. This pill is for our own mental well-being. <sighs> I understand. I knew you were a reasonable person. Now that we've taken the medicine, let's proceed. <laughs> Your Honor. What is it? No, never mind. 
Maybe I'm just imagining things. Let's keep moving. Here we are. Her honor hasn't arrived yet. Please wait a moment. Welcome, dear guests from the Express. Judge Hanya of the Interrogation Division. We've met before. Glad to meet you again. Please allow me to express my gratitude to you again for subduing the demons in the Fixtral Garden. Looks like while March 7th and I were clueless, you already made many friends on the Senjo Lofu. Even though you and I have met before, we can't show any favoritism under the Ten Lords. So, please do as I command as we head to Scrivener Hall and beyond. Don't do anything without my permission. This is not a place for ordinary mortals. You and Mr. Danhang, please come with me. Please lead the way, Your Honor. Please let me activate the mechanism before we all move forward. And please, watch your steps. and you will find. Place is filled with the cold air from the northern peak of the pole. Hmm. Did you hear something just now? Let me check it out. <sighs> Ugh, what an eyesore. This place is packed with boxes and crates. These crates. They look oddly familiar. A few days ago, the Spirit Fairs received reports about an IPC transport ship that was attacked by Borison. Then, a bunch of those abominations were dumped into this place. I had a feeling there would be trouble during the war dance. But throwing both the pirates and the cargo in jail? <laughs> That's a new one. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild crafted something dangerous. We have many records in the Hall of Karma about these wise ones. They love to tinker with forbidden technologies, always trying to push the limits of Ingenia. I caught a glimpse of the mechs in those crates, and they bear a striking resemblance to Borison. I wonder what they're planning this time. Well, business first. Let's keep moving. Strange. I don't remember checking the containment facilities a second time.
wardens prepare for action. Emergency! All wardens prepare for action! What's happening here? Why are these things moving on their own? Something is wrong. The guards aren't responding. Slice like my friends? <laughs> Indulge yourself! Relax. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Mind your manners. Ash, confidence. He's going wild, just like a Borison. Looks like we're on our own for this one. But how is this even possible? The spirit fairers follow the protocols, cutting off power to the mechs and sealing the crates. How could these mechs still start moving? It's just like what happened in the artisanship commission before. These goods went haywire and attacked everyone in sight. Something seems to be jamming communications within the Shackling prison. It's probably these mechs causing the trouble. These things showing up in the Shackling prison can only mean one thing. A prison break. And whoever delivered these goods clearly wanted them to go through the Xianzhou's strict inspection process to show the Skyfaring Commission and Cloud Knights how dangerous they were. They wanted these mechs to end up right here, in the Shackling Prison. If these things already started taking action while nobody was paying attention, then the whole prison is in trouble, I'm afraid. And to make things worse, Another group of visitors just entered the depths of the Shackling prison. The messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. And the prisoner they came to visit might be the target whom these wolf-shaped mechs were delivered here for. If that vicious beast manages to break free, it will be a catastrophe for the Xianzhou Lofu. Here we are. Have we arrived already, Your Honor? Shouldn't there be a cage here? The most notorious felons are locked away in the solitary delves deep down in the prison. Those delves can't be opened without proper authorization. The blue bird paves the path, and the Stygian lanterns illuminate it. Help me light up these lanterns. And the way to the bottom of the Shackling Prison will reveal itself. Huh? I've given you the diagrams for lighting the lanterns. Please take a look. path is open. Once we descend to the bottom of the prison, please do not do anything reckless. Inside the delve behind this door is the greatest enemy of the Foxians, Hule. According to custom, envoys from the Yao Qing visit the Xianzhou La Fu once every century to check on this abomination's imprisonment and condition. 
Even though the Ten Lords Commission sentenced Hule to the Forest of Swords, suffering every day for the rest of his life, I understand that the Yaoqing messengers want to see him dead. Unfortunately, for the past seven centuries, they've had to return disappointed. Because this beast simply can't be killed. If we can use his toxin to create medicine and save an innocent life, it might help balance out some of the sins he's committed. Could you be the key to a cure for the general? Hule? <laughs> and once again, the envoys of the Yao Ching will leave disappointed. However, I won't say the same for me and my brothers. Who's there? I'm just a humble counselor of the Rhino Hound Pack. You can call me Mock Talk. Wardens, intruders on the lowest level! Send reinforcements! Nobody will hear you here. At the bottom of the Shackling Prison. Thank you for opening up the prison for us, Your Honor. We'll take it from here. No wonder I kept smelling that familiar stench. So, it wasn't just my imagination. Do your thing, Morsa. We mustn't let these abominations get any closer! Detestable things! There are too many of them! Once we were inside the Shadow Prison, we found soldiers available for us everywhere. How about letting the enemy strike first? A little more shit. Ill fate descends! Free will, or was it fate? Destiny for oblivion. I suggest you surrender. Now. Of course. I'll still kill you all. But I promise it will be soon. Memories beneath the waters lies an endless abyss! I like adding fuel to the fire. More seasoned. Destiny is apparent. I'm honored by your presence. Since you're already here, why not have a meal before you leave? <laughs> On the still waters of oblivion. How presumptuous! Die now! Leave if you can, Moza. I weep for the heart. It's not time yet. It is a fall. Protecting <laughs> <laughs> damage. A little more heat. Ill tidings manifest. <laughs> 